people it is your good friend chad marco here again with another awesome anime review for you guys today i am going to review a very action packed anime with a wild wild west theme called trigun oh yes yes try <laughs> so man trigun goes way back it takes me way back man um I can remember watching Trigun on Adult Swim years and years ago when I was a wee lad. Um, and it was among several different anime that I watched during that time, like Cowboy Bebop, Yu Yu Hakusho, Dragon Ball, Pilot Candidate, that piece of shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was definitely one, one of the more standout anime, to say the least. So I feel like I had to... Uh, do a review of it. And in fact, I think somebody had requested that I do a Trigun review, so you know, I'm all about pleasing the people, so here we go. Um, so, without further ado, let's get right into this shit, shall we? So, uh, Trigun was created by Yasuhiro Nightow. That kind of sounds like an alias, <laughs> Nightow. Night I don't know many Japanese named uh, that, but he, he also did... Um, a very awesome anime called Gun Grave. Now, I need to watch that again. That shit is good. Go watch it right now. <laughs> but I was reading up on um, Trigun and, his, and the creator and whatnot, and I was surprised to learn that Trigun isn't very popular in Japan. I was, I was looking at the uh, Wikipedia page, and they speculated that perhaps it was because of the aesthetic of Trigun. Trigun has a very Western um um uh, aesthetic to it because um it, it's set in sort of uh a, a like this this weird almost post-apocalyptic but not quite like wild wild west setting like the old western movies that are made in america you know you, you walk into the saloon and there's a guy in the corner playing poker and he's got a cowboy hat and he's spinning his pistol his revolver and around his finger and shit like it is it, that type of of a visual um um aesthetic in this anime um and while reading the uh, wikipedia page they kind of speculated maybe that was why it wasn't very popular in japan but it's certainly very popular in um america and i believe when the manga came out it, it sold out like really quick or sold very well in america um but and, and this is an anime because i'm gonna go ahead and tell you um the anime doesn't cover the entirety of the manga somewhat like how you know when hell scene came out it came out with an anime but it didn't quite cover the entire story um, and then they went back and they made Hellsing, um, Hellsing Ultimate. A lot of times I hear people say, man, they should really make a Trigun Ultimate. And I truly, truly agree because comparing the manga to the anime, the anime is good, but the manga just goes so much deeper as far as the story and whatnot. Uh, but I just want to talk about, uh, you know, little details surrounding the anime and whatnot. So let's get right into the plot. So. Trigun is about a gunman named Vash the Stampede who wanders around the wasteland traveling between different towns and cities. He has a huge bounty on his head and is considered the most dangerous outlaw alive. The mere mention of his name could send people into a panic. Throughout his adventures, it seems as if wherever he goes, chaos seems to follow him. People get hurt, property gets destroyed, entire towns are left a wreck. But the strangest thing of all is that despite all of this, no one seems to get killed. Hmm. Um, so it's important to note that Vash is a hardcore pacifist. I mean, he will fuck you up. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I mean, he'll pop a cap your ass. But he has a rule or a belief, rather, that no one has the right to take the life of another. So even though he's this highly skilled, badass gunman and people are always out to kill him, he always does his best to make sure that he does not kill anyone 
no matter how dangerous they are or how badly they might hurt him so he's running around getting into trouble getting into different fights or whatnot and people are trying their best to kill him but he's always trying to figure out a way to get out of the situation without um killing anyone which can be pretty difficult of course but most people don't really know this about him <laughs> the general consensus is that vash is this mass murderer capable of wiping out entire cities so he tries to keep his identity a secret for the most part now the story actually begins with two insurance agents millie and merrill searching for vash to stampede because after all the extensive damage that he is believed to have caused, the insurance agency that they work for wants Vash to be investigated because, of course, they are dishing out a lot of money because of him. You know, kind of like how, um, um, you know, you know, if, if when shit happens, <laughs> you know, natural disasters, explosions, earthquakes, robberies, fires, whatever, if you have insurance, they're obligated to pay for the damages and maybe even more. And so the problem with Vash is that he's going around causing all this chaos and shit is breaking and blowing up all over the place. And so they're just paying out money left and right because of Vash. So they send these two girls to investigate him just, just to see like, like what the f what is this motherfucking man what why why does so much chaos follow him um so they just want to keep tracking him so they know what they're dealing with when millie and merrill finally track down vash they are in total <laughs> disbelief that he could actually be the legendary gunman himself because quite frankly he's kind of a buffoon <laughs> in fact they ended up mistaking someone totally different for being vash because they expected him to be like this serious cold-hearted bloodthirsty womanizing killer but in reality <laughs> while he's this highly skilled gunman he actually tries to avoid trouble and is an all-around good fun-loving guy um because even on the first episode they meet this big guy with a mohawk and a red shirt and this crazy weapon and they end up thinking that he's vast because he's this big fucking asshole uh uh criminal or whatever so they're like oh this must be vash but all this really all the while it's the fucking weirdo dude in the red coat like smiling and looking stupid all the time um so yeah the thing about trigun is that the early part of the anime is not very story heavy it's actually somewhat episodic with um vash and the insurance agents getting into misadventures throughout the, the uh, wasteland and encountering good and bad guys along the way um but this portion of the anime it serves to sort of give the viewer an idea of what type of place the world of trigun is so this early part to me is very reminiscent of um cowboy bebop which is of course known for being very episodic and um um what's the other show outlaw star another one where it's, it's kind of all over the place um with sort of a, a a story sort of slowly coming together underneath it all but um one important detail about the world of trigun is that the planet they are on is not earth it's actually a planet that humans crash landed on while searching for new planets to inhabit um but all the ships were destroyed or badly damaged when they crashed and the inhabitants of the ships have been stranded there ever since. When the story begins, the humans have been on this planet for a little over 100 years. And while it was very harsh in the beginning because of the terrain being mostly desert, making it hard to come by clean water and places to grow plants and whatnot, enough time has passed to where the inhabitants have been able to construct towns and cities capable of sustaining life. One of the biggest aids to their survival has been the remnants of the lost technology that was on the ships, namely the plants, which are like these giant light bulbs that power the cities and various machines or whatnot. These plants are very integral <laughs> to the plot, but I'll talk about that shit later. Um, let me get a sip of water here. Mm. Yeah. Okay, now... After a while, Vash's motivations and backstory begin to unfold. It turns out Vash is searching for his long lost twin brother, Knives. And this is where shit gets interesting. Um, eventually, you learn that Vash and Knives, they're not human. 
they are actually one of the plants that are used as a power source by the humans they just happen to become sentient and take on a more human form for whatever fucking reason they were on one of the ships when they were born and they were raised by the crew who wanted to kill them at first but were stopped by one of the crew members named rim and while most of the crew members were kind of standoffish or even abusive towards Vash and Knives, Rim spent a lot of time with them and showed them a lot of love and affection, which had a very big influence on Vash in particular. Now, it's not as fleshed out in the anime as it is in the manga, but between the abuse he suffered at the hands of one of the crew members and witnessing the horror of seeing another another one of his kind being experimented on and killed by the humans, Nas begins to resent them. And furthermore, a wedge is driven between him and Vaj as Vaj begins to adopt the pacifist ideas of Rim, which Knives can't, can't understand because as he begins to realize that the reality is that they live in a dog eat dog world, um, essentially, like there's this 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 very important scene where Vaj and Knives they're in sort of this this nature of uh, this nature area or whatever like this that's um, that's on the ship and they see a butterfly that's caught in a spider's web and so Vash is trying to um, remove the butterfly from the web but then Knives just jumps in and kills the spider and again um Vash is adopting this sort of you know life is precious ideology from Rim so when Knives kills the spider he's like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> why did you kill the spider but Knives explains to him that hey if you take the butterfly out of the web the spider will starve and if you don't do anything then a butterfly would die either way somebody has to die if you save the butterfly the spider will starve kill the spider if you want to save the butterfly spare the spider if you please but in the end somebody has to die he was just trying to and Vaz just couldn't get it and so th this moment is very pivotal because that's where you start to see a wedge drive between them because they're starting to develop a different idea of how the world works um so long story short Nas comes to the conclusion that he is superior to the humans and hatches a plan to destroy them and save his species which of course is being used by the humans as a power source he turns the crew against one another um <laughs> and it's, it's just this very intricate <laughs> plot you know of you know false claiming rape and getting one guy frozen in a cryo chamber and then this guy gets jealous because the girl doesn't want to be with him so he kills her and then rim tries to intervene when he tries to kill knives and then the the ship captain opens the fucking door to the ship and makes the guy fly out into space like it's he man <laughs> Nas really fucked that place up <laughs> um but yeah and after doing all that, he goes into the computers to set the ships up to crash into the planet they just discovered, um, leaving only himself, Vash, and Rim. But Rim managed to intervene in time, which prevented all the ships from crashing, and instead made them sort of land really hard, <laughs> saving a ton of fucking lives, though, but losing hers in the process. Nas tells Vash what he did and Vash gets pissed because of course he really loved Rim. He had like a kind of a, you know, a, kind of a, a little shoulder crush <laughs> on her or whatnot. And, you know, he adored the other people on the ship as well. But, you know, what's done is done. And Vash and Nas, they wander the planet observing the humans from afar, seeing their selfish, desperate ways. And Nas um, is still pretty much hell bent on wiping out the human race. So they stay together for a while until Vash ends up shooting knives after a dispute over what they should do with the humans, which leads to both of them going their separate ways. Vash ends up befriending the humans. Well, <laughs> you know, the, the, the best that he can anyway, because you know, a lot of the humans are just fucking assholes. Let's be real. And Nas continues to seek even greater power so that he can destroy humanity and make the plants the rightful rulers of the planet. Now, 
You don't really see Nas for much of the anime. Instead, he has a ragtag group of gunmen called the Gun Ho Guns who works for him. And man, I swear, when they show up, that's when the anime really gets rolling. I mean, and I'm a sucker for motley crews of villains in anime, like the Band of Seven in Inuyasha or the Jupan Gatana in um, Roni Kenshin. Um, I forgot the name of those guys, but the uh, that, that spider cult or so or something that was in hunter hunter um god i just i love it i love it when a fucking ragtag group of villains come together ah oh, it's beautiful <laughs> but uh i digress um they are humans who pretty much sold their souls for power partly because of being straight up psychotic killers but also because they share in knives disdain for people in general and want to see the world burn <laughs> A great deal of the anime is pretty much Vash facing off against the various members of the Gunho Guns, all the while trying to defeat them without killing them or getting anyone else involved, which tends to be very difficult because Knives has supplied them with all kinds of weapons and technology that makes them far more dangerous than the average gunman. Um, in my opinion, honestly, a great deal of what makes this anime good is wanting to see how Vaj actually manages to get out of all these crazy situations orchestrated by his uh, demented brother while trying to cling to his sense of morality and vow to never kill. But that's the basic gist of the plot. Next, I'm going to talk about the awesome characters of this anime. Stay tuned. Ah, la, 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 la. Okay, okay, so... Let's talk about the characters of Trigun. Now, we got to start with Vash, the Stampede. Um, so, yeah, Vash is the MC of this grand tale, part outlaw, part warrior of peace, and part ladies' man. Vash is on a perilous journey to find his long-lost brother and survive the chaotic world of this desert planet he's been trapped upon for over a century. Like a... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's a pretty good description. <laughs> but yeah, like a lot of anime pro protagonists, Vash is kind of a goofball. He's a, a clown type character that can be hard to take seriously at times, all the while hiding an extremely high power level and understanding of the world um, of the world and the people around him. I mean, that's very similar to characters like Naruto, Luffy, Goku, of course, where they're very silly and he's like you just you can't believe they're as strong and as powerful as they are um but yeah and it's it's hard to tell if it's intentional or not because of the way he's able to just turn it on and off but most of the time his behavior ranges from childlike ridiculousness to an almost arrogant kind of show off -y gunman type who likes to get <laughs> get drunk and chase women and shit um but then there's those rare moments where he's a hundred percent serious and like like dude you put you push me <laughs> to the edge i'm about to fuck you up um and re really regardless of if he does his own purpose or not it, it does work out in his favor because most people perceive vash to be this horrible killer from all the rumors that they hear about him so when they finally do meet him most of the people have no idea who he really is um, I probably don't have to say this, but Vash is an all-around great guy, <laughs> you know, as most anime protagonists tend to be. Um, he always does his best to help people around him. He's willing to do anything from simple tasks to saving the lives of innocents from dangerous evildoers, constantly putting his life on the line for the sake of love and peace, which is his catchphrase, by the way. Um, but... One of the most memorable and standout traits of Vash is his absolute refusal to take any life, no matter how big or small, violent or otherwise, he shall not kill. Of course, this all stems back to his relationship with Rim when he was growing up and ideas that she planted in his head about right and wrong and the value of life. And the downside to all this is that his body has sustained a great deal of damage because of always trying to overcome his enemies without killing them which can be pretty damn hard to do when you're facing guys like uh like <laughs> there's this one guy called munev the gale and knives locked him up for 20 years 
so that he could train for the sole purpose of killing Vash. 20 years of just working out, practicing with guns, and, and got big special guns from knives and shit. And, and that was just the first gun hole gun. That was the first one. Like, all right, you, here's the first one. <laughs> this guy has been training for 20 years to kill you specifically. Um, but yeah, you don't see his scar as much because he's always wearing a big red coat and a full body suit underneath that. But his body is covered in grotesque wounds that were inflicted on him in combat. Um, a big part of this show is just seeing Vash having to figure out ways to defeat his enemies without dealing a fatal blow to them. But this isn't really unique to Vash. If you really think about it, in most anime, protagonists kind of live by a no-kill policy like Kenshin, Yusuke, Goku, Naruto. I mean... There's not a lot of shonen protagonists you can say just straight up caught a, a, a human body. Maybe a demon or a monster, but rarely another human. And I think with Vash, um, uh, really with Vash, a lot more focus is placed on his re refusal to kill than normal. Other than someone like Kenshin, where it's also a very int uh, integral part of his character and the plot itself. Um... But to be honest, man, when I was younger, I didn't really like Vash <laughs> that much. Um, I thought his ideas were stupid and unrealistic, but I was also a lot edgier back then. But honestly, I still think really his ideology is nonsense because let's face it. The law of the jungle is kill or be killed in a structured civilized society. We get to enjoy peace and have rules and laws in place to protect life. But strip that away and you'll see some love and peace all right like <laughs> you're gonna see some shit um but now that i'm older i do appreciate vash's point of view a lot more even if it is unrealistic stupid childish nonsense <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being incredibly uncomfortable with taking life and wanting to preserve it to the best of your abilities because let's be real there's really nothing cool about killing people there's nothing cool about it just you know you just gotta do what you gotta do sometimes and um of course there are all kinds of things wrong with his way of doing things but at his core i still think it's a pretty awesome thing to to stand by it's not like oh fuck you you don't want to kill people what's wrong with you <laughs> oh man but yeah I, I i do i think it's cool like like just all around but again it's just it's it is a flawed way of trying to get shit done <sighs> and um as far as superpowers or anything, I think Vash would be best described as a superhuman, although he's not really human, of course. He's just super compared to humans, but um, I would say not quite like Goku is in the Saiyan saga. Um, I would say Vash is comparable to like kid Goku, <laughs> like strong enough not to be threatened by most people but every now and then he might run into a real challenge but even even in the manga i say there are only about five or six people in total that can really fight on his level one being his fucking brother um but it's okay because part of the thrill isn't that his opponents are so strong but rather that he has to stop them without killing them or them killing anyone else i mean like um I know there was one enemy he had to fight called Zazie the Beast, who was a child who was able to control these giant worms with, um, damn, I think he controlled them with some type of device on his head. And Vaz thought, okay, if I destroy this device, then the worms will stop. But no, they kept attack. I think I think they kept attacking, or maybe it was just the kid who just who still had the gun or whatever um but either way that's the type of shit he had to deal with it's like like this kid is controlling giant worms who can kill people and he can he has a gun he's trying to kill me it's like how do i deal with this shit so um that's really what keeps it um interesting um but other than his exceptional physical capabilities um let me see like he can like dodge bullets and shit so obviously he's fast and He's very skillful as a gunman, able to make, uh, like, able to do shit like make shots with pinpoint accuracy and lightning speed. And I know there's, like, one trick he did where he balanced the egg on his gun and then lowered it and catched it with the guns. Just just slick shit like that. Uh, 
He uh, his his weapon of choice is a big revolver six shooter type gun, and um, he also has a false arm with a very powerful machine gun attached to it. And um, other than that, though, he has like a big beam arm, but <laughs> like uh, he can, he can shoot a big beam uh, um, out of his arm, but he doesn't really use that much in the anime. But yeah, overall, Vash is an awesome character. It can just be hard to get fully behind his pacifist approach um to combat and yeah next let's talk about his brother big knives knives millions that's a cool ass name but um yeah knives is the twin brother of vash the evil one of the two if you will um like vash he grew up on a spaceship that was used by the humans to find new life he grew to hate the crew after witnessing their despicable, foolish ways and abuse of his species and decided, you know what? I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> but yeah, Knives is an interesting being because his desire to wipe out humanity isn't just your typical bad guy shit. I mean, he's not human. He's not really one of us. So he has no obligation to ally himself towards our survival and to top it off the humans have been using his species as fucking light bulbs <laughs> so it's like you can really can, can you really blame him for wanting to destroy humanity and liberate his kind in the process um but on the other hand knives does display obvious psychotic tendencies which makes you wonder if his goals are entirely noble you know is it really about your people or do you just fucking hate the humans you know and i think it's a fair bit of both um it all goes back to the influences that knives and vash were exposed to as children both witnessed the darker side of humanity but Vash was a lot closer with Rim, and I think that prevented him from seeing humans as something separate and inferior to himself. Um, his relationship with Rim really made all the difference, and if not for that, he might have never strayed from Knives and his ways. Um, but I have to say, man, Knives is one of my favorite villains because his cause is actually semi-justifiable now at first glance you would say oh he wants to destroy all humans that's bad but look at things from his perspective you're born and instantly the humans want to kill you they let you live but they're still using your species as a fucking power source and you you've witnessed them not only abuse your kind but each other as well how are you supposed to feel in that situation? You know, to me, Nas' situation is no different than all those alien invasion movies where humanity had to fight against another species trying to dominate them. I feel like you can't say Knives is wrong for wanting to survive by any means. The humans, like, you can't really blame him for wanting to destroy humanity and liberate his people because that's the same as saying that in all those alien invasion movies and games and books where humans fought for their own survival, the humans were wrong for defending themselves. That's really, that's, that's kind of how I perceive it to be in a way that Nas is just defending himself from these crazy ass people. You know, it's really just self-preservation. Of course, in the manga, it gets a lot deeper and it turns out that Nas didn't have a full understanding of the situation but even then given the information that was available to him his course of action makes sense at least in my opinion and that's why i like him as a quote-unquote villain because you can at least semi 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 justify what he does i think as humans we have a preference for our own race so we'll say things like not all people are bad or whatever but at the same time no one ever says not all psychic vampire lizard aliens are bad <laughs> when it's time to blow up their fucking planet to save our ass um but yeah much like vaj knives is much stronger and resilient than humans um it's no telling how long they can live since in the anime they are over 100 years old and still look to be no older than say 25 and very much still in their prime physically and the power level level scaling goes way up in the manga it gets pretty crazy but in anime they only get as far as like shooting giant beams out of their arms which can destroy entire cities and put craters in the moon uh, so yeah he's uh he's pretty op and next is meryl strife let me get a sip of water real quick i'm having fun here <laughs> Ah, 
So yeah, Meryl Strife is an insurance agent who travels the land with her partner, seeking out Vash to stampede to keep up with the damages that he causes wherever he goes. Um, she does have some slight tsundere tendencies, meaning that she can be kind of a cunt towards Vash, even though she really likes him. So, you know, typical anime girl shit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but part of it, might also be because of her line of work which requires her to go to dangerous parts of the, the land i mean when you have when have you ever really heard of insurance agents packing heat <laughs> um and her weapons of choice like these little single shot pistols and she has dozens of them underneath her coat um it's very stylish but you gotta wonder like why doesn't she just carry like guns that hold more ammo <laughs> rather than have to shoot and discard the guns immediately but whatever and meryl is i guess what you could call the love interest of this anime although i say that very loosely um towards the end it becomes more clear that she does have a thing for him but he never really shows much interest in her beyond friendship and they don't ever share any real intimate moments with one another um her thing for vaj is honestly best summed up as obligatory love interest shit that really doesn't have much importance to the overall story but overall as a character i don't really mind her i think she's kind of necessary to the story because she offers a more normal perspective <coughs> i got something to think about <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah she offers a more like normal perspective on things so. even though Vash is the MC he's such a complex oddity it, it, it can be kind of hard to see things from his point of view or really understand if he's being serious or not so she's like what Boma is to Goku a normal person tagging along with a very powerful weirdo um so yeah then there's Millie Thompson. Millie is Meryl's partner and fellow insurance agent tasked with the track, tasked with the tracking of Vash's stampede. Now, she's much more bubbly and free-spirited than Meryl. Um, Meryl is kind of a straight-laced worker bee type, while Millie is more laid back and fun-loving. And she adds a fair bit of comedic relief to the anime. When things are too serious, she can kind of chime in and you know, cause a little chuckle here and there. Um, her character is presented as being a little simple, but not really dumb. <laughs> Millie has that old school country wisdom of like a deep south, uh, wise old woman who's missing a few brain cells because of her old age. Um, she's cute, but also pretty big. I mean, she's a big ass bitch, um, almost as big as Vash, but all in all, she's a nice character. And her weapon of choice is this big gun that shoots iron bars that inca incapacitates her enemies and whatnot. Uh, but yeah. Now, for one of the more interesting characters, Nicholas D. Wolfwood. Now, Wolfwood is a traveling priest who traverses the land spreading the gospel of the good Lord to the masses <laughs> of course that's just a friend you know he's actually an assassin sent to watch over vash and protect slash kill him i never quite figured that out um but wolfwood is actually a very cool character he ends up becoming a good friend of vash as well as a very useful ally because he's one of the, he's really one of the few people that can actually keep up with vash in a, a, a heated battle like from the moment they meet you can instantly tell that they have a certain chemistry because they are both good natured yet powerful people caught up in a fucked up situation um like in the episode that he first shows up in um i think this kid gets gets lost and they both like jump off of the bus to go save her and Vash is kind of surprised, like, hey, like, you're you're coming with me? He's like, yeah, like, what do you think? Like, this is what I do. And from there, you just instantly see, like, man, like, they just have this, this really just this instant chemistry, man. Like, Shaq and Kobe or some shit. Um, but 
The thing about Wolfwood is that he doesn't live by the same code of nonviolence that Vaj does. I mean, he'll, he'll kill a motherfucker if it comes down to it. But while he's in the company of Vaj, you know, he goes along with Vaj's program as much as he possibly can. And that's what I like about Wolfwood. Morally, he occupies more of a, a middle ground than Knives and Vaj. Um, who are just the who, who represent two extremes like Vash is almost too much of a saint and Knives is just kill 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 but Wolfwood's viewpoint is more practical I think you know like I don't want to kill people but if it's you or me I'd rather it be you that's on the floor and this ends up creating conflict between Vash and Wolfwood as Wolfwood, he struggles to see Vash's point of view, and it's understandable because one of the only reasons Vash is still alive while trying to preserve the lives of his enemies is that, you know, he's not human. He's much more resilient than the human, so he can really afford to live by his retarded ass code. Um, but Wolfwood is more in tune with the fragility of life and the instinct to survive by any means. And one of the things that makes Wolfwood such a cool character, though, is his weapon of choice, which is a giant cross that has really has the way of a fucking ton. And it has a machine gun attached to it. It's got a rocket launcher, extra handguns on the side in the compartments. That shit is really decked out. And um, it kind of reminds me of Gungrave, who carries like a giant grave, like what was it, a tombstone. Is it's a weapon or whatever? No, not a tombstone. The actual, what the fuck you call it? A casket. He carries a giant casket and it doubles as a weapon. That's the type of shit that, that uh, Wolfwood is on. And... Just but you think back to the fact that the creator also created gun graves. So like just that type of aesthetic detail is very similar to gun grave. Um, and it's never mentioned in the anime, but one of the reasons Wolfwood is able to actually keep up with Vash is because his body has been enhanced with some kind of special technology, which makes him a lot tougher than normal, but it also caused him to age at an accelerated rate. In fact, in the manga, he's actually still a kid. He just looks older because his accelerated aging. Um, and it's heavily hinted that he might have had a thing with Millie, but this anime isn't very heavy on the romance, so it's all very subtle and off screen and whatnot. But yeah, he's definitely one of the cooler characters from this anime. And... Then we have Legato Blue Summers. Now, Legato is one of the primary villains in Trigun. Honestly, one of the most evil bastards <laughs> you'll ever see in anime. Um, excuse me. Damn. It, like, his hatred of humanity almost rivals that of knives. And he's pretty much like Nas right hand man um he's very powerful because he has the ability to control many different people at the same time so even if you gang up on him and um he can just control uh your body and make you shoot yourself in the head so he, he you know he's pretty op and his motivations in the anime aren't very clear but in the manga it was revealed that he was a child sex slave and got his butthole ravaged by old men every day and was sucking all kinds of dick and balls. <laughs> so you can imagine <laughs> why this guy hates humanity. Um, growing up and only knowing as rape as a, uh, as a child. Um, but Knives ended up coming to that town and destroying everyone in it and almost killed legato itself i think legato was able to save himself because his powers were developing at that time and he began to see knives as his savior you know because he saved him from boy rape city so, so naturally he joins knives on his quest to wipe humanity from the face of the planet but and i think i ranted about this when i talked about gundam i the uh, iron blooded orphan but what the fuck is up with the the fucking rape backstory as a motivation <laughs> for a character that, that, that i mean it's it's crazy to me how common that is in anime i mean fucking legato 
Guts, um, that red hair monk from um what was that shit called? Um Dead Man Wonderland. Um God, it, it's it's so many examples. Uh, I'm hell seeing so many examples where the fucking motivation was at least partly because of being raped in the ass as a kid. I mean, God damn, what is up with this shit? I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> Legato is probably one of my favorite anime villains, though. Um, alongside Knobs, um, the anime doesn't really do him much justice, but in the manga, you really get to see just how OP and psychotic he really was because even with knives he's a bad guy like with quotations you know his but his position actually does make logical sense you can look at his goal of exterminating humans as a noble quest to liberate his own people or whatever but with legato he just straight up despises his own race and his whole aura just oozes diabolical evil energy something like super boo i've seen a lot of anime villains in my day but legato is really a special kind of evil someone who could never find redemption or change his ways it's not the petty wickedness of a thief or a rapist or someone who just kills for fun with him it's just i hate humanity with a burning passion with the same passion that an artist has for his craft he is like the kobe of inflicting suffering <laughs> on other people like he knew the worst way you could hurt vash was to make him kill someone he was willing to lose his own life just for the sake of making vash suffer the pain of breaking his own principles if you killing me will cause you more suffering than me killing you, then I will die. <laughs> That's fucking evil. That's an evil that transcends the instinct of self-preservation and the vanity and pleasure of overcoming your foes in mortal combat. Legato Blue Surfers is one of the most evil bastards in all of anime bar none. God damn. <laughs> but yeah, man, very good villain. In this anime and last but not least gotta talk about rim um rim of course is a member of a space crew that watches over the people who are in cryogenic sleep wishing to be taken to a new planet that they might one day be able to inhabit so it's kind of a two-part job watch over the sleeping humans and find a new planet to live on so Rim is a very kind and caring person. When the crew wanted to kill Vash and Knives when they were babies, she intervened. She got in their way and said, no, we're not killing these fucking infants, they're children. When, the, when there was a conflict on the ship and someone was trying to kill her and the kids, she tried to stop them using nonviolent means rather than force. And of course, while raising Vash and Knives, she always tried to instill good values into them which had a huge effect on um Vash, much more than Nas, obviously. And um in a way you could say Rim is like Vash is God, you know? Like that's where the core of his ideas and beliefs really stem from. And whenever he's having serious inner conflict, he always thinks back to Rim and what kind of advice he might have given him. Um but overall you don't really see rim all that much since he died when vash was still a kid it's mostly in flashbacks and dreamlike sequences that you see her in so she almost seems like a mythical figure of some sort but yeah she's a pretty straightforward character the close really the, the closest thing to an angel you'd ever find walking amongst humanity but at the same time there was something very plain about her as well as the, the like divine she kind of reminds me of Julia from Cowboy Bebop. Like, an average woman in appearance and temperament, but as strong as she is warm and inviting. A very balanced, yet ordinary woman at the same time. But, yeah, she's, she's uh, you know, she's cute. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all the characters I want to talk about. Of course, there are more characters in this, but, um... A lot of them just aren't really like important enough to really bring up because they kind of occupy one or two episodes at the most. 
Um, so yeah, next I'm gonna talk about the good and the bad. Please stay tuned. <sighs> okay, so let's talk about the good. Now, first of all, I love the character designs in this. I love how most of the major characters in this anime have a very stylish, over-the-top appearance. And even their weapons are, are just crazy and wild gadgets that you've never seen before. Very creative designs. Um, starting off with Vash and his bright red coat, tall, spiky blonde hair, yellow shades with the zigzag temples. I mean, he just, he's got, he's got, he got the drip, bro. <laughs> Vash definitely got some drip. And uh, Meryl, who, like, she has kind of a simple design, but underneath her coat, she's got dozens of single shot pistols. And it looks really cool when she lifts her coattails and shows them off. Um, it's very flashy, but I don't know how, it, I wouldn't call it very practical, but it, it looks cool. And, um, Wolfwood, of course, he has the giant cross with the rocket launcher, machine guns, extra pistols on the side. Might be a grenade or two in there. I don't know. <laughs> um, but really, all of this is especially true with the villains. Like, brilliant Dynamite's neon. He has the giant shoulder pads and neon patches on his clothes and even on his gun. Um, they got a family of giants called the Nebraska family. They got a musician who uses a saxophone sound waves as a weapon, a samurai gunman, a freaky looking guy with a sniper rifle with a burrow that's like six or seven yards long. Damn. <laughs> I mean, it's really a lot of cool looking, but freakishly designed characters in this anime. But um, it's awesome because it all adds to Trigun's unique aesthetic. Um, but yeah. Um, what I also like about it is that it has a lot of feel-good, sentimental moments, um, especially early on in the series when it's much more episodic and not as focused on the gun ho the, the, the gun ho guns and their fuckery. Many episodes focus on a particular person and their personal struggle with Vash's, um, in which Vash helps them to deal with in one way or another. Like one of the more interesting stories was about a. Um, this gunsmith who was highly skilled, highly regarded for his, his, um, his ability. Um, but he ended up turning to alcoholism after realizing that his family was killed by the very guns that he created, which is such a good premise because on one hand, he made those guns for the sake of protecting those that he loved and empowering people. But it ended up being the very tools used to take what was most precious away from him. You know, seeing him work through those demons and get back on his feet again, it just leaves you feeling all warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> or even little minor moments like when Wolfwood gives his his um his last bit of food to like these two little kids, revealing his soft spot for children. Um, the circumstances that the people on this planet are are are, are in. It's just typically so dire. They're either being bullied and abused by someone stronger, suffering because of a lack of resources, or forced to make hard decisions that require them to give up their morals for the sake of survival. But in between all that, there's still these moments of compassion and sacrifice that reminds you of the better side of humanity. And let's see. Another thing that I like about it is the battle of ideas between Vash and Knives and really the world at large. Um, excuse me. Oh, shit. I always get so gassy when I'm doing this shit. <laughs> but yeah, um, a big part of this anime and its story deals with morality and differing ideas on what's right and wrong. Of course, you have Vash and Rim who believe that you should never kill anyone or anything under any circumstances whatsoever. Then you have Knives who believe that might makes right and that living beings killing one another is just a part of the natural order of things. 
And also there's Wolfwood who occupies more of a moral gray area, not explicitly wanting to kill others, but is more than willing to do so if he feels that he has to. And there are also like subplots that deal with morality as well. Like I mentioned earlier, the gunsmith who created the weapons that were used to kill his family. You know, in, in, a, situ in a situation like that, you got to think, is it right to create weapons for the sake of protection when they can also be used to kill? Then there's this one man who takes the daughter of a mayor hostage because years ago that same man attacked his settlement killed almost everyone there including his own daughter and now he wants to exact revenge and it's such a compelling story because here you have a guy that is the mayor of a respectable prosperous town but it turns out that he was only able to acquire it by shedding the blood of the people who created his foundations which kind of makes me think of america which is a great and powerful country, but was only possible because of taking the land away from the Indians. But really just getting to the heart of the matter, wouldn't you want to take revenge if someone took your family and the land you worked so hard to cultivate? Is giving up and letting it go really the right thing to do? Or should you exact some sort of revenge? And it's all kinds of situations like that scattered throughout the anime and i just i love the various situations that they create and the outcomes and and, and, and whatnot I, I feel like it's very well done uh for the most part <laughs> and that brings me to the bad and <laughs> starting off with this the battle of ideas between vash and knives and really the world at large now i know i just praised this but really, my problem with Trigun is that it never really comes to a satisfying conclusion as far as Vash's struggle with his sense of right and wrong. Yes, he finds his way and his determination again at the very end, but the conclusion that he came to didn't really make logical sense and seemed as if he was still unwilling to admit that his ideas, while good-hearted, are terribly flawed now this is a big spoiler alert so <laughs> vash does end up killing someone and in his defense <laughs> gotta mention this it was probably the most impossible situation he could have ever found himself in only knives could orchestrate this kind of fuckery it was literally kill this man or watch your friends die no if ands or buts no way out of it no no pleading no begging no talking you're gonna kill him or they will die there's no other choice so he kills the man and just falls to pieces afterwards i mean whoa but, but eventually he pulls himself together when Meryl is protecting him from these angry townspeople who are trying to kill him once they find out he's vast to stampede she says no one has the right to take the life of another much like rim and vast realizes the error of, of his ways oh yeah me killing that guy was just a mistake i forgive myself let's move on bull shit bullshit vash was totally unwilling to admit that he benefited from taking a life if he did not kill that man meryl and millie would have died straight up no no getting rounded that was your situation what are you gonna do so i feel like to just chop it up as a simple mistake is to basically say saving them was a mistake as well in the end, Vash failed to take full responsibility for what he did and why he did it. Because you have to ask, if you could do it all over again, would you do it the same way? Would you let them die for the sake of standing up for your beliefs and standing by your principles? If so, fine. I don't give a fuck. But don't kill a man and refuse to acknowledge that you benefited from that action which is really what Wolfwood and several other people were trying to tell his naive ass throughout the whole anime. We don't want to kill anyone, but if it's a serial killer rapist or my loved ones, I'm choosing the latter every time by any means. Now, 
I'm sure the manga does a much better job of dealing with the this aspect of Vash's character. But in the anime, it's definitely totally half ass, without a doubt. And another flaw of this anime is that the action scenes are a bit subpar. Now, this is an older anime from the late 90s, so I will cut it a bit of slack. And you got to remember that it wasn't very popular in Japan, so maybe that affected the budget. But I noticed while watching it again that some of the action scenes really aren't that well animated. And um, I can remember someone on A saying that Trigun had PowerPoint action sequences. <laughs> and I have to admit they were kind of right. Some parts are animated relatively well. Don't get me wrong. But it's certainly lacking in a few areas at the same time. So, and I think Vash's stance on killing might have something to do with it too. You know, really watching him bust guys in the kneecaps all the time or trying to knock them out isn't always very entertaining. But I think all the nut job killers that, that he's surrounded by more than makes up for it. But, you know, it, it's just the action just isn't always as well animated as, as it could have been. And, you know, him being a pacifist kind of affects the action too. Um, and finally, the worst thing about it, honestly, is that it doesn't cover the entire manga. It's honestly a tease. <laughs> um, a few years ago, I found out that Trigun was based on the manga and that the anime ended abruptly. So I went and checked out the manga and I was blown away. Real talk. There is so much more to the story. The anime really only scratches the fucking surface. It goes so far beyond what the anime gives you. It's insane. And it makes sense because when I go back and I look at the final confrontation between Vash and Knives in the anime, it does seem like it was incredibly forced and rushed. So obviously they just want to wrap things up because they knew the anime wasn't going to continue past season two. Again, it's so much more to it. Like you learn more about the gun ho guns and their background, Wolf Woods backstory. There's another like 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 important ally character that's never mentioned at all in the anime. I think his name is called Razlo, the Devil Fang, or some shit like that. Guys, exactly what his name was, but it's just whole new characters, other villains like uh, what's his name, uh, Elzla, the the Crimson Nail, or some shit. Just crazy shit, bro. Crazy shit. Um, it it, it just gets bananas. And best of all, I think Vash is a lot more likable in the manga because even though he's still very much a, uh, a, a pacifist, at least as far as killing people, you do see his more savage side more often. I mean, he can really put fear in someone when he really wants to. So that's about it as far as the good and the bad. So it's time to score this baby. I think for the story, I'll give it a three um was well, certainly nice to to learn that there was much more depth to what was going on than what you might initially think you see it at first and it's, it's, it just seems like a you know just this is just an anime with a wild wild west aesthetic but it's so much more than that like this this isn't even earth <laughs> like it, it's like just that in of itself it, 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 it is so far left from what you might have initially thought. Like, this is not Earth. They've only been here for over 100 years. Vash is not human. Um, and then you have, of course, the whole battle of ideas between Vash and Knives and um, the, the, the various minor stories throughout the anime. Um, and even though it ends abruptly, there's still enough to make a pretty decent story. And, and so I, I give the story about a three out of five. The action, I'll give a three out of five as well. Even though it does have some PowerPoint action sequences, um, it, it's still damn good. The action is still damn good. And there's enough action to keep things exciting along the way. It's not as animated. It's not animated as good as it could be, but it's enough. And so, yeah, so I get it like a three out of five. Um the animation and art style again is kind of dated the powerpoint <laughs> action sequences 
Um, so I give it a 2.5 since it, it is kind of dated, but at the same time, it is consistent. It's not bad. It's just that you would, I, damn, it just, it, it should have been more, but the overall art style, like I mentioned earlier, I think as far as like the character designs and whatnot, that's definitely t top notch. It's just that it's held back by just how dated it is now and would definitely benefit from having a Trigun Ultimate for sure. The music, I give it a three out of five. Um, the music overall is decent and there are some good tracks that stand out. Um, and... Yeah, it, it's a soundtrack that, that you guys should go and, and and listen to and find some 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 decent um some decent some decent songs. Um, comedy gotta give it a three out of five. This shit is actually surprisingly funny. I didn't talk about it enough in the, in the, the review the review earlier, but this shit is is funny, man. <laughs> it's funny as hell. Like underneath all the violence and when shit gets crazy and wild and serious, man, Vash just being a goofball that he is, and then you got Millie and Meryl adding comedic relief, and it's an anime that doesn't take itself too seriously. And when it's funny, like I said, it's actually pretty funny. And I think that's a, a big strong like like plus for this anime is that is it's funny and it it does comedy well. Like believe me, um. And the Ichi, give it a one out of five. Not a lot of sexual innuendo in this. Um, maybe some cleavage here and there, but that's about it. And overall, overall, I give Trigun a nine out of ten. And I feel kind of weird about giving it that high score because I'm thinking about the manga. Like compared to the manga, this shit is like a seven. <laughs> like compared to the manga. It's a seven, but even without knowing about the manga, it's still one of the best twenty six episode animes out there. Like, it, like with like, cause you know there are, there are a ton of of, of anime. There are is approximately twenty six episodes, and this is one of the better ones. Like, this is a good fucking anime. It's just that when you watch the manga, I mean, watch when you read the manga, is it just. It really fucks with your perception of the anime because it, it just it feels like a tease. It, just, it feels like like disrespectful almost. But still, man, manga aside, it's a great fucking anime without a doubt. A legendary anime classic, and I would definitely recommend checking this out. But you gotta check out the manga too. It's just, it's not complete. The story is not complete without the manga. I have to recommend. That's why I'm sticking with the nine because I'm saying that, like, if you're gonna watch this, you gotta put, you gotta go and watch, you gotta go read the manga afterwards too, man, because I feel like that really is the the way to cap it off. You got to, man, because in fact, I ain't gotta tell you because it, it man, to, when you finish watching this shit, you're going to want more. You're going to want to know how it really ends, man. Because it's just, it, the, the setup and everything is just so good. But, whew. <laughs> That's it for my Trigun review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I think next I'm going to do Die Buster. Or is it Gun Buster? The newer one. Die, I think it's Die Buster. I think that's going to be my next anime review. Um, so look forward to that and I will return. Hope you guys have a very healthy and productive season. Um, yeah. Done. <laughs>